Hey everyone, my name is Ben Gramico. I'm from InterNACHI. That's the International Association of Certified Home Inspectors, world's largest organization of residential and commercial property inspectors. We essentially train and certify home and building inspectors all over the world. And today is an InterNACHI webinar. You may be attending the live webinar. All of our webinars are live, free, online, open to everyone. Or you may be watching a video recording because we record every webinar so that you can watch it on YouTube or listen to it on our podcast. So if you're attending, thanks for being here. Um, this is a special webinar because my buddy Dylan Winicki from Protect Property Inspections is gonna talk to you about commercial property inspections and InterNACHI can help. And we also have a sister organization, ccpia.org, that's ccpia.org, if you're interested in becoming a property, a commercial property inspector. So we have uh, an online sister organization as well. So that's InterNACHI at nachi.org and ccpia.org if you wanna be a, a commercial property inspector. Dylan, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me today, Ben. I know you're a busy fella and you have a team of inspectors. So let me ask you a couple of questions about your business. How's business? It's going great. Um, no complaints. We're, we've been growing, um, you know, growing pains here and there as we've been kind of breaking into some new markets and starting some new ancillary services and that kind of thing. But, um, you know, that's that's just business. We're, we're happy to do it. And we're happy to have the help of InterNACHI and the CCPIA. So, uh, How long have you been in business? Uh, just uh, uh, September was my three year mark. So not long. I, would, I figure we're a baby company in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I've checked out your website. I like to spy on uh, home inspectors websites and uh, you got a great website and uh, there's a logo on your website. It's a turtle with a cross on its back. What, what is up with the logo design? I'm actually a professional firefighter too. And yeah. uh, I don't know if you know this, but you know, firefighters uh, don't have the longest life expectancy. So um, turtles do. And so I created this home inspection company thinking that maybe I could live a little bit longer in life. <laughs> I still am a firefighter. Yeah. Um, I'm also a believer. And so I put the cross on the back just to remind us of why we're doing this and, and that kind of thing. So. Awesome. God bless. Hey, tell us how being a firefighter helps you with your business. Absolutely. So a couple of ways. I mean, one, just the organization I'm a part of with the Phoenix Fire Department, there's over 1600 members. So right there, you're kind of reaching and, and the word of mouth likes to grow and firefighters <laughs> like to like to gossip, I guess. So you better do a good job or they're not going to use you anymore. So no, we've actually got a lot of referrals from them. And actually, a lot of them are also realtors or tradesmen. And so you can kind of create this big marketing atmosphere and referral partners in the fire department, which has been really nice. A lot of us have second jobs and that kind of thing. So that's also helped. And then just, you know, the general trust of the public, I think, you know, like firefighters are usually pretty trusted yeah. people, at least we should be. Right. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, it's just, I think that does help a little bit. We don't do a whole lot of marketing with it, but the people that do know we are firefighters, they appreciate that. Um, not all of my inspectors are firefighters. I do have a couple that are part-time that work with me, but, um, we actually have eight inspectors right now. So yeah. yeah. Eight. Absolutely. Yeah. So we, we've grown a little bit since we, since we signed up for this webinar, actually. <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so how do you think, uh, what do you contribute your success to? Is you know, honestly, the big man, if I really had to contribute it to something, but, uh, you know, um, I'm just so blessed, you know, I, when I started this, I, I wanted maybe four to five inspections a month just to something to, uh, off, you know, offset the expenses and, <laughs> and make a little money kind of thing. And, you know, I figured out I really enjoyed it. And then, you know, I got to where I was doing two or three a day. And then that became actually very stressful. I'm sure people who, who do that in the, in the inspection industry, they realize how, how hard that can be on you. It can be hard on your family especially when I was using a different reporting software that, that wasn't quite as user-friendly than what we use now. And so it just, you know, we dialed some things in and we've got more efficient. And then I started to do some hiring and, and realized I was, I was being <laughs> blessed in that area where there was just good people coming my way. And, and um, you know, I just, I, I contribute my success to a great team, really. I mean, I've just some great inspectors who have great ideas um, great motivation, you know, self-motivated to go out there, do a good job, um, great reviews that come in and then just the word of mouth has just built from there. So it's been nice. 
That's great. Um, so why don't you uh, click the share button and you're going to share an inspection report. Uh, you use software, you mentioned software, you use Spectora software uh, as well, but you have a few other things you want to share with us as well before. Yeah, we get absolutely. I mean, um, so first of all, I'll talk a little bit about my uh, commercial uh, company that we build. It's basically a DBA off of my protect property inspections that you see the turtle logo. So we have a little bit different logo up here, as you can see. Arizona Commercial Property Inspections and InterNACHI designed that logo as well. <laughs> we appreciate that design team. They do a great job. Right. Um, but what we found though, is that there, there's actually, I, I don't believe enough uh, commercial property inspectors in, in, in the Phoenix area. This is the fifth largest um, city in the nation, you know, and metropolitan area, probably even bigger. So uh, there's a ton of opportunity for commercial inspections. And we felt like maybe it'd be a good idea to break into that market. Again, some of my inspectors had experience already, whether it be trade experience or inspecting from a previous company doing a lot of commercial. So I felt like I had people around me that knew um, what, what they were doing. And then with the help of CCPIA and some of the training that they provide, um, as well as just the, the standards and that kind of thing to re reduce liability that we actually had a national standard that we could inspect by and include that in our, in our agreement and everything like that to where um, the liability wouldn't be too, too harsh and we can actually get into this and do a good job. So yeah. We've created a commercial template for our software. We use Spectora for those of you who are you know, familiar with that, very easy to make different templates and that kind of thing. So we created a, a commercial template and a, a commercial DBA and started its own Google, its own Facebook, that kind of thing. And, oh. um, and then we have the listing here on CCPIA. And when you click on our link, this is actually what comes up and talks about Arizona commercial property inspection. So, different services we offer, um, different buildings and, and um, types of buildings that we can inspect and feel comfortable inspecting in our service area. So for a commercial inspection, for those of you who don't know, you can charge quite a bit of money uh, depending on the building and the complexity. So we're willing to travel basically anywhere in Arizona to do that. And um, in home inspections, you're charging hundreds. In commercial property inspections, you're in thousands. Absolutely, yeah. Um, this building that I'm going to show you here, I, I don't mind telling you, it was a, a it was a more than ten thousand dollar inspection. Wow, so, good uh, job. That, yeah, impressive to me, and I did a lot of research on how to um, how to actually price that appropriately. You know, I'm not in this business to, you know, take anything from anybody. I want to do a good job and do a fair, um, provide a fair price, and I feel like we did do that. This was a very complex inspection, um, so I can kind of show you guys what what this looks like. This was the building here. Um, it was actually a private uh, technical university, digital media university. Um, the building itself, interestingly enough, was actually designed to be a spa, a large spa. Um, so it had a ton of different units um, that, you know, people could, the idea was, I guess they could sublet it and have their own nail salon or, you know, hair salon. And so there was multiple different units with their own thermostats and their own sinks and that kind of thing. So there had been quite a few remodels done since it was built and uh, it was built in 04 and a um, ton of remodeling, but it did still have 35 air conditioners. So that was wow. uh, pretty impressive. Yeah. Oh, uh, wow. So me personally, I have a few things where my company just, we, we have to draw the line and say, Hey, we're going to subcontract that service out. That's just going to be way too much for us. So in this case, Air conditioning did get, uh, HVAC did get uh, subcontracted out to a licensed professional. We have, um, just like CCPI recommends, we have a, a small contract with them where basically they agree to not do work on the property within one year uh, prior, or I'm sorry, post inspection, so that they're not doing this inspection, you know, with the thought of trying to get anything out of it. They're just providing a good general inspection, unbiased. Yep. Um, that's a recommendation from the CCPIA. So we've taken that seriously. Um, this client specifically knew of a few roof issues already, so they went ahead and hired their own roofer, which is totally fine with me as well. I know Ben's kind of familiar with roofing. There's a lot to it, especially in the commercial um, industry. So we were comfortable with having a roofer out for that. Um, this, this roof here had, I don't know if you can see here, but there's tile roof, and that's going to be a concrete tile. Very common in Arizona. My home inspectors are very familiar with concrete tile. And then there was also a foam, a flat foam roof where all the air conditioners and that kind of thing were held. So, yep. um, 
you know, we would have been comfortable talking about it and, and commenting on it and re inspecting it, but I think they got a, uh, a better deal having a roofer go out and they also got a, uh, a quote, uh, a couple different quotes from a couple different companies. So good thing is I was able to be there when the roofer was there. So I was able to ask him questions, follow him around kind of, and I helped provide access and that kind of thing too. So it made it pretty smooth process. Yeah, that's the strange thing or, or kind of a strange thing with commercial property inspections. You can essentially be a manager of other resources and at home inspections, usually the home inspector is doing the whole thing. Uh, you really don't sub out uh, the kitchen to another yeah. inspection company yeah. or anything like that. But a commercial right. property inspection, you got to know how much you can do, what's your capabilities, and maybe uh, there's another resource that knows something more than you and you need to be able to make that decision. Absolutely. And uh, more, more training on that from CCPA that was very helpful, as well as the standard operating procedures, the COMSOB. Um, they, they teach you a lot about that. And, you know, I probably wouldn't have even tried to get into commercial inspections if I didn't hear and kind of understand it and train and know that that's, that's really a possibility and the way that you can and should do it, depending on the complexity of the building. Yep. And, and when, you, when you have all that knowledge, then you can like be an equal to like another professional. So when you bump up against a commercial property roofing company, you can be on the same terms, you know, the same terminology and things like that. Exactly, yeah, I absolutely agree. Um, you know, so on, on this, this one in particular, um, you can see we subbed out the HVAC um, and these, these are all report attachments that were added to our report. Um, and they're, they're all accessible right here in a, in a nice little link and everything to the client. So it makes it kind of nice. So we subbed out the HVAC, the termite, fire suppression and extinguishers, and also the fire sprinkler, sprinkler system. Um, this was their annual test. And then they actually did an inspection and test as well. So you can see that's pretty comprehensive there. They had three different reports for that. Yep. Um, and then we had a sewer scope. That actually is done by my company, um, but I have a, another, again, I have a little DBA for that through my home inspection company so that Again, we can offer that to other home inspection companies who may not be comfortable offering that service. We are, um, we did do the training. Um, there's a training that InterNACHI provides online and we did do that um, and our inspectors, you know, bought their own cameras and they, you know, they go ahead and provide that service. So we have that, that there. And then the agreement is also attached. I think it's important to talk about the agreement with commercial because again, <clears throat> it is a little bit different. We're subcontracting a lot of these things. so. It's, there's not all this automation like there is for a home inspection where, you know, they just order it online and it gets scheduled online and then your home inspector show up, you know, and everything's good. Um, there's, you know, this one in particular took about 50 emails back and forth between the client and the agent and the broker. And, you know, there's a lot of coordination involved. Um, and again, this is why you're, you're charging more money for this. There's a lot of coordination, a lot of liability and a very complex property. So one of the things I like to do is when somebody calls my office and asks for a commercial inspection, the first thing I start doing is just research on the property. You know, what, what am I even getting myself into here? Is this something we can handle? Is this something I feel comfortable with? I start making phone calls to my subcontractors that I've uh, made relationships with and, hey, can, you know, can you get in in a certain amount of time? What are you going to charge? That kind of thing. And then what I do is I put together a proposal. And the proposal, I've actually created a template and it includes a lot of language from CCPIA and what we inspect, what we don't, and um, talks about kind of what we're willing to inspect. And then it chart, it breaks down each charge for, um, for each subcontractor and our inspection. And then honestly, the client kind of can customize that and write us back and say, yes, I want termite. Yes, I want HVAC. No, I don't want roof. And that's what happened in this inspection. They didn't want the roof through us. So we handled everything else. And then they kind of also talked about their expectations. They didn't really care about cosmetics on the interior because the, uh, the actual tenant of the building um, was going to be paying and, and, and I guess responsible for maintaining those areas. So that's another good part of the, the CCPI training is it talks about how to find out, you know, um, who's maintaining what and kind of some of the pre letters that you can send out to to different um, clients, whether it be the client, the building owner itself. We even like to talk to building maintenance and get some ideas from them on what's been going on. Yeah, there, There's a ton of research to be done before this inspection even starts. Huh. Hmm. Yeah. 
So the agreement, like I said, is kind of customized. Once we figure out that proposal is agreed on, we figure out the price and um, what services they want, the client wants, we'll then create an agreement and we send it through our Spector Spectora software, just like anybody would on a home inspection. Um, the client will sign it and then pay. Um, one thing I have found with commercial inspections, sometimes the clients want to pay a little bit differently, you know, upwards of $10,000, they might pay, you know, chunks at a time or say, can, are, are you comfortable with us paying, you know, half now and half at the end or whatever. Sure. So sure. we're willing to work with people on that. We realize it's a large expense. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, without further ado, I'll kind of go through the inspection report. You'll see, um, for those of you that are familiar with Spectora, it's, it's uh, very similar to a home inspection report. Um, the difference is our template uh, makes sure that we cross every dot, uh, across every uh, T and dot every I when it comes to the CCPIA because we want to make sure we're uh, inspecting within our standards. Yep. And if you're live attending uh, the webinar right now with Dylan and I, uh, you can feel free to ask questions. Uh, just click the Q&A button. There's a Q&A button somewhere on your side. Not really the chat. The Q&A button is better uh, for questions and answers. So Dylan's uh, willing to take some questions if you have any that pop up. Go for it, Dylan. Absolutely. Um, so first, I'll just show you kind of what this building looked like. It's kind of nice. We were able to go on their website and find out um, we found these uh, floor plans here and it talked about what different rooms were. So we kind of started to get an idea how many bathrooms there were, you know, what kind of rooms there were uh, going to be uh, presenting themselves when we actually got on the property. Um, so we have a couple different layouts. It was a three story building. Um, and then uh, as far as the home or the property inspection report, I mean, this looks very similar to what a lot of you might understand. So we have uh, blue items, which are going to be more of a maintenance item. We have a repair needed. Um, which is going to be a very common item, but we do recommend repairs um, to prevent further issues. And then we have significant repair or safety hazard. Um, very, very uh, common way of doing things in the home inspection industry. So we've kind of taken that from our, our partners and a um, little bit of an overview, comment keen to definition. I'm sure most reports you guys see have that. Um, inspection details, just talk about some of the information that we saw on the day of. Again, this is all stuff that's just good to include and a little bit of CYA as well. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about how it's occupied. I mean, there was some rooms where you could you could hardly get into because there was so much going on. Again, with it being a digital media um, school, there was like prop rooms where there was just a ton of props and clothing and all kinds of stuff. So definitely need to, um, you know, make sure that, um, you know, we cover our butts in those areas, I guess. That makes sense. Yep. Yep. Um, Insulation and ventilation uh, was one of the first things here. Um, you can see here it's just a, a few insulation bats had fallen down. Between the floors, uh, there was uh, crawl spaces and then uh, a small attic space as well because all the HVAC equipment was split system. So they had condensers out on the roof and then they had air handlers in the crawl spaces, if you guys are familiar with those. Mm -hmm. That's probably our most common uh, form of air conditioner here in Arizona. Um, AC is very important here. It gets upwards to 120 and, and it's uh, pretty uncomfortable. So like I said, there was 35 of them on this building. So <laughs> um, not a whole lot of defects in this area though. Um, but again, this is all um, pretty basic stuff and, and what the client wanted was a, a pretty basic inspection. So also I'll orient you to these two, these tabs here. Um, so we have, this is now gonna be the exterior. We have the overview that has our check boxes. And if we had any recommendations, we have informational tabs. Some of those are just going to provide, you know, little pictures with uh, what we provide with, uh, recommend with grading and drainage, just some educational stuff. And then also our our types and condition or our, our types, conditions and uh, systems and materials and that kind of thing you'll see here. And then we also have limitations built into every everyone as well. So there's going to be also um, the defects here and these are where they're color coordinated and that's what the dots above that I had explained you can kind of see these are color coordinated comments here. So again blue just some minor maintenance stuff vegetation abutting, you mm. know, uh, I think we all call that around the country, a country uh, because of you know termite uh, intrusion also mechanical damage that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, good to keep those away from the building in Arizona too. we have roof rats that like to climb trees and and get into your stuff so that's no good <laughs> well, wait a minute well, you, can, you have to explain to everybody else what's a roof rat 
<laughs> so we, we have uh, larger rats, these pests that will, will climb up these trees and they'll get into the roof system. They'll find little ways to get into the attic space and start nests and it just yeah. is a pain. So yeah, definitely <laughs> want to avoid that. <laughs> so we, we make vegetation a pretty big deal here. So um, as far as grading and dra uh, we had some drainage issues here. Um, we call this out undergrading and drainage, but these are actually roof drains coming from the flat roof portion. So there's going to be a primary drain and a secondary drain. Primary ran underneath um, the ground here and terminated actually, I think you can see the picture here, terminated out into this um, ground drain, surface drain. So it went underneath, but it actually collapsed here. Hmm. Um, the secondary drain would come out of this scuffer, scuffer here. And you can see we also had some issues with the scupper heads, they were missing. Um, so the little, the little spout tongue, if you will. So yes. allowing possibly some moisture to get down between the cladding. We have stucco cladding here, and we'll talk more about that on the exterior because we did have uh, quite a few um, you know, stucco issues here. I take a picture with my uh, tool here just to show the size kind of thing. I mean, somebody could really freak out about that hole if they didn't know the size of it. So <laughs> I think it's good just to orient people. Looks like maybe we had a, a guardrail on this window at some time and it, it got torn off. So they had some, some damage around the window here. Huh. So yeah, some small stucco defects, pretty common here in our area. These are uh, any type of, uh, usually any type of stucco kind of decorative feature like this is gonna be made out of foam, at least in our area it is. And then they wrap the chicken wire around the foam and then they stucco around that. So those do um, become delaminated and kind of loosen up over time, especially as the building moves. We do have fairly expensive soils here in, in the Phoenix area. And uh, when it gets wet, um, expansive soil takes place and then you can kind of see what happens. Stuff moves around and then over time, 20 years later, you get some movement and you get some cracking. Looks like they may have added a door back here on the back of the property. And you can see they, it looks like they did add a lentil possibly. You can see that it's maybe cracking around where that was. Um, we, we kind of brought it to their attention, but didn't see any issues with it. Um, there was some issues with this door, but we call that out in a different area. Um, you can see some evidence of water intrusion. So this, this the top of this small uh, decorative balcony is actually stucco. People don't know stucco is actually a very porous material. So water will go right through it and then it kind of starts to weep through here. Yeah. And uh, the chicken wire that's behind this will rust and then you can kind of see it rusting through. So. Some of this is really maintenance items, but we really wanted, uh, again, the buyer uh, client paid a lot of money for this. We want them to get an idea of what they're looking at and what they're getting themselves into here. You can see these large columns. These are large concrete columns and they're uh, starting to crack a little bit down at the bottom where they're probably wicking up a little moisture. Um, we have a couple drip systems around there as well as just probably rainwater. Um, now there was a maintenance crew you know, for this building, what were they, were you in conversation with all the stucco <laughs> problems or? There, there was a, there was a maintenance professional we met with. It sounded like maybe he was uh, behind the eight ball a little bit, if you will. Yeah. So, yeah. I, yeah. I think, you know, COVID and all the other issues that yeah. were going on, I think it just makes, makes it tough, but uh, this was a functioning school that the tenant um, was a functioning school, the digital uh, media art school and a um, ton of, ton of people in and out throughout the day. We did it on a, I believe a Tuesday and, um, that's when they requested us to do it. They said they have less people going in and out that day. So yeah, it, it was impressive. Some of the deterioration and damage on this building as, as you go along, you'll kind of, you'll be impressed. You know, some of the stuff's a little bit more minor, but as you get into like these broken windows. Um, so some of these rooms, if you can imagine a digital arts class, you know, they have kind of darkened down and that kind of thing. So they can provide their own lighting and, and that kind of thing for proper camera angles and such. And uh, you can see how they have this covered. So they might not even know this was broken, to be right. honest. So I, I think this uh, inspection was as much for the seller as it was the buyer, you know, or the, the tenant, if you will. Yeah. Um, the tenant actually takes care of a lot of this stuff and is responsible for a lot of this stuff. So um, you can see just some um, seals around the windows. These are um, just more decorative seals that were starting to warp. Yep. A, a lot of windows were starting to... Um, the seals were starting to go bad. You can see a lot of staining and, and condensation and that kind of thing. I mean, we had a, a ton of windows showing that. Um, you can kind of see here. I mean, there was just a ton. So um, definitely some window issues. 20-year-old 20, 20 building, about 20 years old. So kind of expect that. Um, 
a little bit of a trip hazard here. This is outside. I think this is important. Now, this is a good segue to talk about uh, ADA inspections. We didn't do an ADA inspection on this. We do offer the service. Um, we would use a CCPIA uh, provided checklist to do that inspection because there's a lot to that and you want to make sure you do that properly. But we also have a company we could subcontract that to. They're just uh, very, very in-depth. And because of that, they're very expensive. And so usually when I offer them, uh, when I offer that service to the client, it gets denied. But, you know, think liability purposes. I think it's important to at least offer that inspection service um, or ADA uh, in any commercial setting. Yep. Um, we do take a look at the grounds and the parking lot and just some stuff like that. You can see just some damage curbing here, just things that I would want to be aware of if I was buying a, a building of this price point, <laughs> mm -hmm. for sure. We talk about the asphalt and some of the cracking that you can see here. There was actually some pretty good deterioration and alligatoring in this area. And then what we found out later was that actually this line right here and everything this way of it was actually the clients and this side is actually owned by Harkin. So yeah. At least we did our due diligence there and try to provide some comments on that. Cracks in the uh, walkway. We also had some, maybe some overwatering from these, uh, the drip system here. You can kind of see all the staining here on the concrete. Um, they did have a fountain. They didn't want that inspected. Um, we're very familiar with pools here in Arizona. We do a lot of pool inspections. So we would probably treat that just like a pool if we were to have inspected it, you know, um, make some, very similar recommendations as far as water treatment and things like that. And then probably some safety stuff. We'd make some comments on that just to CYA as well. Um, you can see this window here. Again, this window went all the way down to the ground. It was tempered glass, um, but it didn't have, like all the other windows, it didn't have the decorative railing that was out there. So I went ahead and recommended it. It used to be there. Um, and this isn't actually something they're gonna step out onto. But if it used to be there and all the other windows had, I, I felt comfortable saying this one should have it too. So you can kind of see there was actually another fairly large walkout um, balcony in the front of the building on the second floor. And the railing was actually fairly loose. Um, that's again, another, we made that a red item you could see there. So it was also starting to rust in a few areas, definitely needed some maintenance. Um, you can see nothing terrible, but definitely something just deterioration we should bring to their attention. This was one of, go ahead. Yeah. What do the colors mean for you and your team? And yeah, your so blue, blue's gonna be more of a maintenance item, something that, um, you know, on a commercial inspection, their maintenance crew can probably handle. An orange is gonna be something more that they might need to even subcontract out, maybe get somebody with a little more knowledge or even a licensed professional, maybe even dig further deeper into. And then uh, red is gonna be significant as far as cost and or safety concern, so. Okay. You can kind of see this is an example of a red item. You can see this is above this is a balcony and you can see it's the water starting to intrude here. And who knows if this is starting to cause, cause some mold growth and things like that. So again, something they're going to have to get a licensed professional to maybe remediate, repair, and uh, hopefully, you know, there's no mold growing behind there that they're going to have to take care of, but that can be a, a pretty large expense. Here's a better view of where that balcony is. And you can kind of see where the water's coming down through here also see some efflorescence and some staining up here on this stucco as well, where the water's penetrating that wall. So definitely some water intrusion going on there. Very, very dry here in Arizona. Um, so if you, if you do see this, it, I should say in our part of Arizona, I'm actually born and raised in Flagstaff, which is a lot like probably Boulder, Colorado, right? Uh, but uh, Phoenix is very, very dry, um, low desert, you know, um, but when we do get rain, a lot of times uh, buildings and houses aren't built to withstand it. And um, so a lot of changes need to be made. So you can see this is the change they tried to make and they added a little bit of <laughs> caulking or some type of mastic material here um, where normally that would probably be a, a good place for a flashing, if not to, you know, counter flashing and that kind of thing. So, but, uh, but yeah, so we made some good recommendations in that area. On the interior, on um, the main things we we're looking at, again, because the client did not really want um, cosmetics looked at, this was more going to be stuff that is, um, you know, moisture caused um, or, or fairly significant cost to repair some of this stuff. So we put in some comments, you can see a lot of this moisture stains and, and actually moisture damage was near the HVAC ducts and registers. 
So what we ended up finding out later was that they had quite a few HVAC issues that were causing some condensation issues and that kind of thing and, and leading to some moisture in those areas, um, bubbling up on the ceiling. And you can see every single one was fairly close to a, a supply register. So um, you can see how it was very important to have that licensed HVAC specialist there inspecting that. So also some staining here too, again, pretty close to the to a register here. And then you can see there was even some, you know, just out in the middle of nowhere where again, there could be plumbing, um, all kinds of different things that could be causing these. So um, we didn't remove these tiles, at least not in this case. Um, there was a lot of places we did remove tiles and uh, look at the structure of the building and comment on that. So um, definitely something they need to get some, some people looking at all the moisture related stuff. This is kind of their front entry here. There's a person that sits behind this desk and welcomes people in and they have some live plants here that they pour water into. And there's a small crawl space access behind this and you can see kind of what that looks like. So <laughs> <laughs> definitely getting some water coming down there. We recommended they have somebody take a look at that and further evaluate. So um, floors, there was just some minor stuff, some tile damage, some cracked tiles, that kind of thing. When we get into structure, there was actually some fairly significant settling cracks that caused some loose tiles and grout cracking and things like that. And we'll talk about that. There were some interior doors that were um, a little bit out of square, started to uh, create some door closing issues. Um, we commented on this because it was actually more due to the, uh, um, the door itself and the actual hardware and the hinges and that kind of thing, as opposed to actually what we would thought maybe would have been structural. So we kept it in the door section as opposed to the structural section a couple cracked windows again a lot of these would maybe be even hard to see from the inside but we did um, find a couple of them and commented on them um, some of these bathtubs were not in use anymore uh, because it's not a spa anymore it's a school that i don't think they imagine people are taking baths at school so you can see this tub spout had been discontinued and, and we went ahead and called it out just so that it was made aware of so you had a lot of moisture uh, indications. Yeah. Um, there's two questions, John and Michael are asking about using infrared. Does your company use infrared? We do not yet. I um, actually just hired a, an inspector that uh, is very comfortable using that. He's been in the mold and remediation um, business for a long time. He actually holds a B1 commercial residential license, contractor license here in uh, Arizona. And he's going to be a great inspector for us. He's very excited to get into the commercial, especially. So we're going to start um, providing some ancillary services with him. We're going to start providing mold, um, infrared, uh, lead-based paint. Um, and he actually has a lot better moisture meters that can do a lot better job than the ones we've been using. So um, we're very excited about that. So, yeah, good questions. We do get the occasional question and, and uh, inquiry about um, uh what was I going to say there? Infrared. Right. Um, and uh, we just, we don't get enough of it to, for us to have really ever, you know, sought it out. Pretty expensive cameras. We use them at the fire department. I'm familiar with how to use them, but I haven't done the internachi training and that kind of thing to actually know how to use it in our industry. Yeah. So I'd like to make myself more uh, familiar. And I do think it's something that we could definitely um, market and, and do pretty well with, and especially with commercial. So cool. Does that answer that question? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Right, great. Um, again, here's where we had uh, some cracked tiles here, but they were actually starting to loosen um, and, and they were very linear and um, you could kind of see where there was multiple in a row. So we thought, you know, maybe some settling cracking going on under that. You can see where this floor is actually starting to lift here, this laminate or vinyl material here. And you can see how the, the cracking here right in between the tiles here in the grout starting to make these quite loose. So maybe even some heaving going on underneath. Um, so definitely recommend uh, having somebody look at that. This here, pretty minor, um, just cracks probably between the CMUs and you can see about every 16 inches, small little cracks there. So wrote that up more, it's just a maintenance. Um, this is something I really like that Spector offers. I, I would direct your attention to these sub panels here. Really easy to just duplicate sections. And so as we're inspecting, and I actually have uh, one of my inspectors, thankfully, again, have been blessed to have a great team. He's actually a, a licensed electrician. And so we bring him out on these and he does just the electrical systems and, and is very comfortable with those systems. 
And uh, one thing Spectora does is make it really easy on adding sub panels. You can see it can get a little bit out of hand with a commercial. Uh, the CCPA recommends, you know, uh, a representative number. However, we try to get to everyone. You know, I think that's important, just like we would on a home inspection with outlets, windows, doors. Um, we're going to do every everything we can to get to them. You know, obviously, this is an example of one that the clearance wasn't there. We're not going to move somebody's workstation to get to it, you know. Uh, but you can see we have a nice clearance picture here. I really want uh, something I want to do this next year is add more of these uh, uh, pictures here just for represent representation and kind of think provides a good picture for people. So, yeah, for sure. Um, main panel, main gear here just had some debris in it. Um, you know, nothing too crazy, but something we figured we would provide in there for a maintenance recommendation. A ton of junction boxes, missing covers. I mean, again, this is stuff that a maintenance guy could do in one day, get his ladder ready, get a couple screws and screwdrivers and covers and, and go around and start working on getting all those. The other thing you can do, we see, you see the little bubble here. When I hover over, it'll show the uh, location. That's something that I um, ask all of my inspectors to do is put a, a little brief location in, on every photo, just so that people have an idea of, um, you know, where to go to try to fix those things. So, hmm. Definitely help out the maintenance guy there. <laughs> Did we have any other questions there? Yeah, uh, Eric asks, I'm noticing there's stuff in and out and around the areas of your inspection. To what degree, if any, do you move customers' stuff to get a good inspection of the area? That's a, that's a good question. You know, on, on a home inspection, I think it's something that um, obviously then we're going to have more, you know, occupant belongings where it's per people's actually personal belongings. You go into a garage and there's all kinds of boxes and storage and that kind of thing. I mean, if it's something we can move and cause no damage uh, to our backs and also to the owner's belongings, I think that's fair to, to just scoot out of the way a little bit to grab a picture and at least look the best we can. Um, if somebody, if it's like a hoarder situation or it's, it's just going to, it's, you know, going to be extensive, we're not going to move it. Now, in this case, like the one above, you know, I'm not going to take the chance of possibly messing up this person's workstation. Maybe they have very important information on here. I don't want to be the one to accidentally unplug it or, you know, <laughs> and cause something like that. So, you know, if it's not going to hurt our back or hurt the client's property, um, I don't think it's a, a bad idea to, you know, scoot some stuff around. But I think that's every inspector's um, choice of how much, you know, they want to take on liability, whether it be not covering that area, not inspecting it, or taking the opportunity to move it and possibly damaging something. So yep. there's, there's a liability either way. You have to be comfortable with what you're comfortable with. Yep. And speaking of liability, John asks, um, are you liable if one of your contractors, your subcontractors um, misses something? Awesome. You handle? Great. So that's something in our agreement that we have that basically says um, if any service is provided that we subcontract to a licensed contractor that they're going to come in. It basically says that their report is their report um, and that everything in it, in it is to their license and their standard. So they're not writing their report to the CCPIA standard anymore. They're writing it to their license standard. So, you know, they kind of accept the liability, not kind of, they do. They accept the liability in that, in that sense. And then we have language in our agreement that then um, makes sure of that, make sure that we're not the one held liable of that. Great. So and definitely good to have a lawyer step in and help um, when creating that agreement and then understanding how to use it and customize it as well. Cool. All right, let's keep going. And uh, how long do you want to go, Dylan? Like, I didn't even ask. Do no, you, you know what? I mean, I, I'm, I'm good to finish this up. I mean, we got probably another 15, 20 minutes. I, that sounds good. Is that okay with you? Yeah. Sounds real good. Cool. Thanks. Um, some loose outlets. I mean, again, this is pretty common stuff. Some light switches that didn't work, didn't turn anything on. Um, these are some extra light covers that were just starting to deteriorate. Again, just some stuff we did get a little bit picky on. Um, but again, we spent a lot of time there and wanted to kind of make sure the client got their money's worth. Outlet covers missing, some GFIs that were damaged or would not trip. You can see though this one's missing the, the actual uh, reset button there. Um, so... You know, all pretty common stuff that we would, you know, similarly see on a, on a home inspection. This is a condensate drain for a, an air conditioner. You can see it's coming down and started to deteriorate the stucco. And actually, you can see the aggregate poking up through the sidewalk as well. So maybe adding a little drain there, extending that away from the foundation, just like we would on a home inspection. Um, plumbing systems here. Um, 
I'd like to go into my information a little bit just to get a little bit of the water heater and that kind of thing. A couple different, um, there is only one tenant, but a couple different services for, for uh, water meters. And they only had one water heater. So again, this was once designed to be a spa. So at, at one time, this room was full of tankless water heaters and we could see the remnants of them. Um, but at this point, they were just using this big, I think it was a 75 gallon or, or something along, this. it's in here somewhere. But they were using a, a, a larger uh, tank here to just heat just the few bathrooms that they had expansion tank, that kind of thing. So we have all this informational stuff here to make sure we cover our standards um, and provide some education and then uh, and then go into our defects here. This here is actually, you can see from this picture, um, this this is leaking here, this plumbing above ground here. This is a, a shutoff system. It's actually for the drip system. I called it out under water supply because I wanted somebody to come and take a look at this whole system. There was a lot of corrosion on it and there was water in this whole area. So who am I to say that it was only coming from this. I wanted just to direct the client's attention um, to this area, not necessarily be a specialist and say, oh, it's definitely this valve or that. So yep. um, see some some faucets leaking again, pretty picky stuff. There's some gas, gas line corrosion, nothing too crazy, but something that the CCPI does recommend is that we um, call out if there's ever um, gas piping that does not have labeling every five feet that it is gas. So we did go ahead and put a note in there about that. And again, that's where having that CCPIA to guide us on what our standards truly are is just so important. Um, I think a lot of really good home inspectors out there could do this commercial inspection job. You know, they, they can really figure it out and do a good job at it. But having a set of standards is the most important thing, in my opinion. So Michael then asks, uh, how long did it take you to be comfortable doing commercial property inspection? You started off as a home inspector. How long did it take you to a tackle a so, building this big this is yeah a yeah yeah so good part of that is uh personally i have some commercial trade experience i used to pour concrete i um and i used to frame houses and that kind of thing not that houses are commercial but i did some large um custom homes uh, framing wise and then i also did some concrete in some large commercial properties up in the flagstaff area and so uh, what I found was uh, that's not much experience. You know, there is a lot to these buildings. And so what I found was there was a lot of training uh, needed and CC CCPIA helped with that. And then also, um, again, I it just was blessed with such a good team. I had an inspector who had done a ton of commercial for a, a different company that he worked for previously. Uh, I have that commercial electrician. You know, I have relationships with commercial roofers. I've made a lot of relationships with the different trades. The HVAC guy is actually a personal friend. Um, I, I made a good contact with the fire suppression guy. I mean, so they're just, you have to make relationships. I think that's what provides that comfortability. As I started reaching out, I did the training and realized what I needed. And then I started making those relationships. And then I went, you know what, kind of like what you said, Ben. Um, it's not that I have to know all this. I have to know somebody who knows how to do it properly and who I trust to do it properly. And that's what brought that in. So as far as a timeline, we started doing this about six months ago. So, I mean, I'm still learning. I still have a ton to learn on the commercial, but that's why I'm doing this training. This is, this is also for me, you know, I'm up here doing this because it's making me better as well. And my, it's going to make my team and my company better by being here on this webinar. So I, I appreciate the questions because they're only going to make us better. Right. Right. So um, there was a, a couple kitchen appliances and things like that, little break rooms and such. So we we did do a, you know, we, we have a, the ability to do that. We also do have a commercial kitchen template we can use. And we have somebody, again, another relationship with somebody we can have come out and do hood system testing and Ansel systems testing and stuff like that. So um, let's see here. No, no anti-tip. I mean, you can kind of see this is pretty basic stuff as far as the interior went. Um, your elevator, we have some limitations just basically saying, and this is again, CCPIA. The standard is that we would get in the elevator and operate it with normal, you know, normal functions, normal buttons, right? And make sure that it works right. Um, no loud noises, that kind of thing. And then also, this is something that I definitely always offer to be subbed out um, in, in the initial proposal, because I want to make sure if they want this tested and, and inspected, we can have that done. Another thing is to just communicate with the seller and the, the building uh, owner or building owner or um, maintenance personnel because they might already have a lot of this information. Oh yeah, we just had the elevator tested, you know, a month ago. Here's the report, 
you know, and that's something you can kind of direct towards the client and it always helps. So you're doing a lot of coordinating um, in an inspection like this, which, which I do like. Um, I, I actually enjoy doing that. So um, it's become something that uh, has been a great service for us. Um, you know, like I said, we started the whole second company, Arizona Commercial Property Inspections. Um, we also this year have started a, a InterNACHI Partner School. Um, we're just kind of getting that going. And with the help of Ben's team and, and InterNACHI, we're going to provide InterNACHI curriculum to students here locally. Um, so if anybody um, knows anybody in Arizona or is in Arizona and you're interested in becoming a home inspector, we're going to teach with from a local perspective, from local experienced inspectors, the InterNACHI curriculum. I, I can't think of anything better for our Arizona inspectors. We're also going to open up an InterNACHI chapter here, which they used to have one a while back, and I, I think it's no longer with us. So we're going to start one, get that going here. We want to bring people together. We want to pre, uh, point people towards education. We want to keep the standards high for home inspectors. You know, you hear things out there in the industry from realtors and from people that aren't educated that, um, you know, home inspectors do this or do that. I don't like that. I want I want our standards to be high. I want, um, you know, other inspectors to be successful. We found that the success rate of home inspectors who just go through a random school and, and uh, you know, go try to do their 30 parallels in here in Arizona, they, they, the success rates aren't that, uh, aren't that good, aren't that high. We want to raise that bar, help people get through school and actually know how to either run a good company or, you know, work for another company and actually be a good successful inspector for that company. So. I can't wait. That's going to be great. It's going to be great to have you as a training partner. You took advantage of the, the training program that InterNACHI provides to any school, existing school, or if you're thinking about opening up a school, uh, we'll help you in any way possible. Really appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I mean, if anybody has any other questions, I'm here. You guys can find my information on our, on our website, Facebook. I try to do a lot on Facebook. Uh, it's free advertising, right? So uh, uh, you guys just let me know if you have anything else. I really appreciate you having uh, me. And uh, again, just wanted to um, thank my team because they've done just such a good job. You know, if they're watching or going to watch this, you know, they're the ones that deserve all the all the props here. So. That's really great. Dylan Winicki from Protect Property Inspections. I really appreciate taking some time out today to talking with us and uh, so that we can be better. And uh, sounds like you are a blessed man with a successful home inspection business and a commercial property inspection business and a sewer scope business and a now, a now a school. Man, you are busy. We're trying. <laughs> We're trying. <laughs> Thank you so much. And uh, thanks for all the resources you guys provide, Ben. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. And stay safe and healthy. See you, Dylan. Bye.